And we are uh, live. A little late, but we're live, as always. Welcome back to the, uh, what is it called? The Adam Sandler Podcast. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is a strange week. Oh, sorry. I'm a little out of it. I just woke up. <laughs> um this is the uh, the podcast where we take an unnecessary deep dive into Adam Sandler's strange and sordid career. And with me, as always, is my friend and trusted co-host, uh, Christopher. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And, uh, yeah, this week, <clears throat> we watched The Cobbler, um, which, <sighs> it's a strange one. Because uh, it... On the surface, it looks like it's it's gonna be a good movie, um, but it it's gotten terrible reviews. I mean, not more terrible than usual, but for what it looks like, it got much worse reviews than I thought. But then I saw it, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I suppose we should discuss it. Uh, but but let's let's start with uh, let's start with. Let's start with the trailer. Let's start with the trailer because I doubt many people even know about this movie. Come, come to think about it. Um, and let's look at the trailer and see how they sell this movie. Um, what, what, and see how they, what kind of Adam Sandler movie they sell it as. <laughs> um, and then we'll discuss it. Because <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very, very strange one this week. So let's start the trailer. Uh, three, two, one, uh, play. I think this is actually in HD. Yes. How was work? Work was the uh, same as every other day. Hey. Why don't you call the Rabinowitz girl? Take her out on a date. Uh, she got married ten years ago. She's got three kids. You should step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need these fixed, you man. Sure. And I need them tonight. Mm. <gasps> wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then he... <laughs> He becomes a bunch of different people. I'm a woman. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, this is this is part of that elusive genre, magical reality. Mm. Um, which is it's different from fantasy and science fiction, where it's just like it's not a fable. It's like a real world movie with a little bit of magic in it, which I guess. I guess you could count bedtime stories as a magical reality movie. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll try, say so. Trying to uh, pinpoint because I can't, I can't think of another one other than that one, really. Uh, of of Sanders movies or no, generally. In general, I'm just trying to think of one. Oh. Um, uh, there are like uh, I would say Groundhog Days, Groundhog oh, Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, for example, I'd say uh, Big, obviously. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true. So, oh, I love yeah, th there are a few. There are a few. Just... There are a few. Yeah, yeah. But but it is a kind of a sort of half dead genre, I'd say. Yeah. It's not. We, it was big in the '80s, '90s. Yeah, Don't see exactly. It as much now. No. Um, but yeah, let's 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 talk about the movie then, because I'm I'm interested mm -hmm. in hearing what you what you thought of it. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, did you know about this before we? Started planning no. this. Uh, okay. This was one of those I've never heard of, uh, and you talked about it uh, that you'd read some reviews and you said yeah. it because when we were setting uh, putting together the list, uh, I saw the movie and I saw the poster and I was like, oh, I never heard of this, and, and I only saw the poster and mm -hmm. I thought, ah, oh, maybe it's this one with serious movies. It looks kind of serious, <laughs> yeah, because uh, it, it doesn't doesn't look like. Uh, a rich asshole. Uh, he he looks like uh, uh, a a man who's 
who's down on his luck. Yeah. And, and that's, that's like his character when he plays serious movies. Exactly. It looks like one of those. He's a little little sad, a little lonely. And he's got he's got the beard stubble, which he usually yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so yeah. And, but then you told me that you'd read some reviews or something, and people said this was uh, just another Sandler movie. Yeah, that, um, it, it turns, or that, that it turns into just another Sandler movie from having a pretty good premise. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I was I was going in with low expectations, um, but I mean, I didn't hate it. I'd watch it again. Uh, it's an. I think the pre- the premise is interesting. I like the premise. Uh, there are some there's some good moments in this movie. Um, <sighs> personally, personally, I'd say just uh, remove or shorten down some plot lines and. Oh yeah, develop and develop a few other plot lines, and uh, that's one of my <laughs> my big problems with it. Um, yeah, it, it it tries too much at the same time. Uh, I also I I wouldn't mind if this movie was a little longer. Longer? Uh, yeah. If if they re if they uh, rearranged some things and scrapped some well, like one or two storylines and developed some other storylines, I I'd. St- I'd go for a two-hour movie. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it would have to be, like, a different movie, then. Completely different, because um, this is this this didn't turn out to to be the movie I thought it was going to be, and I guess that's... You can't, you can't say that, oh, it's bad because it wasn't the movie I wanted to be, mm. but, but it's, it starts out being, like, one movie in... This kind of, kind of like a yeah, like a s- s- sort of sad little like drama movie with this yeah. magical reality in it, but then it turns into like a uh, like a heist like a, movie, like a, yeah, like sort. a heist movie with this, these crime elements and gangsters and there's very like realistic violence at one point and it's just like what is going like, at a couple of points what is going on here? Yeah, I I gotta say though. Uh, the movie up until uh, we discover the magic, so to speak, mm. um, which is okay, ten, maybe, maybe even fifteen minutes. Yeah. Oh no, it's it was quite like a while between fifteen and twenty, and I was like, "Oh no, they're actually following. They're following the formula. Damn it!" <laughs> yeah, but I mean, because uh, up until then, I, I was I was hooked. I was like, "This could oh, be yeah. a good movie." I really like, enjoyed this... the, the intro or whatever. Yeah, because it, it's. It's this guy who's taking over his father's shop uh, just because of necessity, yeah. and he doesn't really like. I really love that scene when the the girl comes in and wants and and asks him to write a, um, a petition to save the neighborhood. We oh, need yeah. to save the small places, and he said, they're... "But why? <laughs> yeah, they're buying up all the storefronts. Oh, how much do you think I can get for mine? He doesn't want yeah. to be there. Yeah." yeah. Yeah, and I, I really like that dynamics, and I, I thought that could be a good movie in itself. Just yeah. a, a, a portrait of this person and him accepting his role in the neighborhood and mm-hmm. in the, his place in life. Yeah. Uh, but no, but no, we have to do magic and stuff. So that that's yeah. that's kind of sad. Uh, and I thought that was gonna be because I knew about the I knew about the premise, and I, I even knew about the big reveal. But I, I because oh, okay. I I had heard the spoilers. Um, I don't know. I guess we're gonna spoil it later, or whatever. Yeah. Ah, okay, sure. Are we always spoiling this oh, that's, podcast? That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Why I'm, I'm, but but this one had like a, a proper twist. Ugh, nah, sort of, yeah. sort of. Um, ah, well, fuck that. <laughs> it's an Adam Sadler movie. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so um, when I when I first saw that they they introduced this this protest thing where the the mm. rich white people are buying up the neighborhood to to gentrify it. I was like, oh, so that's what it's going to be. He's going to discover his roots. He's going to find out that he's, um, yeah, like you said, an important part of the neighborhood. And um, especially since he's, he's taken over his father's uh, shoe shop, uh, which his grandfather owned before that, and his gra- uh, great-grandfather owned before that. And he would realize the importance of the shop um, mm. th- through this magical realism um, or um, magical thing. Um, so it would be kind of like the like like a good MacGuffin, sort of, mm. like a good Deus Ex Machina, um, and it sort of is that, 
But instead, because he starts using the the, um, I don't even know what the machine is. You you resole shoes with it, which I I, I thought they were gonna do a thing with that, that he changes the soles. Of the oh. shoes, eh? but they never mentioned that. Oh. Hmm. I wonder if that was well, like, in the back of their head. I don't know. Well, they do. They do. They do have a really bad joke about it at the end of the movie. They do. Yeah, it's uh, when they see the, all the shoes, and and oh. and he, he says, "We are not just cobblers; we're the keeper of souls." Oh, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, so, uh. so they they made a a bad joke about it, okay. but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it could have been more more uh, a part of the magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because uh, after he discovers that he can become the people who owns the shoes, um, he starts first of all having fun with it. Uh, uh, but then, as we as we discover, as always, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so he gets himself into some trouble with the local uh, gangsters. Um, but I, I thought ultimately that that would be like a, a short like ten minute detour. Yeah. And then he would he would like discover the soul of the neighborhood by becoming all these different people and discovering that it is worth saving and he will sign the petition and he yeah. will help that girl who he eventually falls in love with, which you know they do. But that never happens. That would have been a nice. Cute little movie, but instead he uses the shoes to like uh, nestle his way into the gangsters who are trying to buy up the the neighborhood and uh, like, try to steal one of them, one of their uh, like henchmen's watches and guns, and it just becomes this weird crime movie almost. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to describe it. And that that made me really like why why are they taking it in this direction? Ugh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I was thinking, and yeah, they they sort of hint on it, but not really. Uh, I was uh, when I realized this side story of stealing money from the the, the gangsters <sighs> yeah. became the main story, apparently from for. Because it was it was framed like a side story too. Yeah. Because we had we had a few outings when he tries to he tries to be a good looking guy and goes to a bar and hits on a girl yeah. and a little a few of those things and then he's following this gangster to get money because he's uh, the gangster is, is well he's an asshole. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he he collects protection money from several of the shops in the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Uh. It, it, so it feels like just another side story and. And I was yeah. thinking that he was going to do these small side stories just to realize the the potential and the responsibilities of this power mm -hmm. or this magic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, th then that side story just never ends and just keeps on that, going. That becomes and that's, the movie. That's, that's the movie now, apparently. Um, uh. So, but when when I realized this was the movie, uh, I was I was dead set and I was kind of hoping for it. That it would become like an origin story of sort of a superhero, because it it was really framed that way. Yeah. And yeah, it 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 sort of hints it, at it. it kind but, of hints at it in the but end. But they never yeah, do but... anything about it. No. <laughs> so what I really wanted, I was I was really excited for it, but it didn't happen. That they would do like a that movie would end on like uh uh like Spider Man one. With a monologue, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's zooming out when he's like standing on the rooftop, and I am the cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kind of set that up in the end. Yeah, yeah, really, they, yeah, really they, lazily. That, yeah, oh, they sort of set it up, but it's, there, are, there are several. It's so bad. Hundreds of cobblers like us, and then there's also the 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 the, the, the whatever the sewing guys, and, and oh, then there's the dry cleaners. But you gotta watch out for those, like a joke. Man. And they they leave in their shiny Batmobile looking car, and they have a driver, and say, what what is going on here? Yeah. They, have, they even have a bat cave. It turns out. Yeah. And it's like, what? And and that's like the last. Four minutes of the movie. Yeah, and then credits. Oh, oh, what? Wait, is there a network of cobblers protecting the world or what? Oh, it's so yeah, weird. Yeah, and that's what I what I mean with I I would want it longer because it would have been better if they did if they removed a lot of the uh, hitting on girls and just walking around randomly things in the beginning. Yeah. Or, or well, 
not the beginning, like the, the second act. Yeah. Bad love the movie. Uh, cause there, there's like a lot of scenes that doesn't go anywhere. We just, it's not even, um, testing the limits. It's cause it, again, if we think of Spider-Man or whatever, mm. uh, we have this scene where he, where they test out the limits of the magic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or in that, he case, figures out his powers. Space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but these scenes, it felt like those scenes were meant for that, but they didn't do it. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't feel, we didn't learn anything. That was just filler. No, yeah, yeah. We we, we kind of learned that he doesn't have any scruples because he dresses yeah. up as a black man and steals another man's shoes. <laughs> like, and, he's all, and, and he's uh, almost, uh, well, he's, he's ready to have sex with his... Name neighbor, uh, yeah. looking like her boyfriend or uh, husband. Yeah, and which is uh, yeah, that's a lot of issues behind that. A lot of issues, um, and, and so I mean, technically, he does stop because he can. I can't do this, but you can also yeah. you can also just read it as he can't do it because he can't take his shoes off. So you you don't exactly. know what he's actually thinking. Because he because he starts hoping... to take off his pants. Yeah. And, and then he sees the shoes, and then he says, oh, I can't do this, and pulls off the pants and leaves. And uh, you can you can interpret it e as either or. Yeah. I also choose to interpret it as he, he realized oh, no, this I, is wrong. I can't do this. this is, well, it's, it's rape, technically. So, yeah, yeah. Once again, uh, rape! So, so I, 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 I hope we can interpret it like that. Yeah, me too. Uh, me too. It, it, at least we can... At least it doesn't happen, yeah. and we can interpret it different ways. Uh, if uh, <laughs> comparing to uh, that's my boy. Oh god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, anyway, so if we cut all those scenes, we just yeah. remove all of that. We only have the montage when he tries on a lot of shoes because that that's doing everything. No oh, sure. Uh, we get all the rules and, and get it out of the way. So we do that and then we go to the uh, this gangster thing. Yeah. Uh, but we cut that in like half that story arc. Yeah, uh, sure. And make that like the second arc or second um, um, second act, and then the third act could be the last four minutes of the movie, where we do the reveal and we do like a, an introduction and a lot and a little just so, some something small, just some interesting things. Uh, okay. Uh that's that's how I'm thinking. So it's not that big of a rewrite. Uh, and then yeah, I know we add like 20, 20 minutes to the movie. But uh, so you want it to become like a superhero movie? If they do it like with in, like, in, like in the style it, of Unbreakable, so not like a not, not not like a Marvel movie, but a a superhero comic book movie. Oh no no no! I I mean like more in the in the feel of Kickass. Oh okay. Yo, I'm, yeah, like, I'm, uh, I'm not meaning yeah. the I'm not meaning the tone of Unbreakable because it's no, very okay. dark. Yeah. But yeah, that it is a very 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 grounded sort of superhero movie. Yeah, grounded but like funny. Oh okay. Yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, like a joke. Like take like taking the piss out of superhero movies. Sure, this movie came out like in the beginning of the superhero era. Yeah. Uh, like a year so, after first of yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So so it, it maybe it's a little too early to to do that but i think it would be funny now yeah uh, maybe but I, I i'm i'm with you on uh, on like severely shortening the whole crime aspect of it and just make mm -hmm. that like uh, yeah like a side story but i would i would uh, the whole thing in the end like not just because it's superhero stuff i just that was just so weird i would <laughs> more or less cut that out of the movie and have the last uh, the last um, uh, act be just be him um, using the knowledge from the first two acts to help the neighborhood and help the the protest lady, um, and and focus so on, sort focus of, on that. So sort of the same thing as they do in the third act, but it's not connected to the the crime. Yeah, it's it's thing. not him running around like doing crime stuff. It's him actually taking part in the. Uh, uh, the protest and becoming mm. becoming part of this neighborhood that he yeah. he actually did love. It turns out he loves this neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that could have worked too. And also, as we said, just uh, remove the magic part and just make it a portrait movie. That could also yeah. work. And and that's why I can't hate this movie because there's there's so many so much potential, so much interesting things you can do about it. Uh, it's 
like it's it's not like a lot of other movies where you can't even fix it. No. Adam Sandler movies. In this movie, there's yeah, there's 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 a good movie in here somewhere. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. Um, and I mean, just they they try to do too much at the same time, and they it's very unfocused. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, the guy that both uh, wrote and directed it has made good movies before. I mean, um, he's made a movie called Win Win, which I really love. Um, which is more of a much more grounded story um, about mm. like real people discovering what they really love, and so it's like the, a classic kind of indie movie. Um, oh, I mean, it's Station Agent. Oh, all right, yeah, Station Agent, of course, yeah. Um, so it's weird that, and I, I wonder because he wrote this, and I know he wrote a Win Win, and I think he wrote Station Agent. Um, and there's one mm. other movie he wrote that I know that I, I I have seen and like enjoyed, but not like loved. Um. So it's weird that this is so different in style that it has this oh, magical reality he made, thing. And you made this. The sto- it, it's not. It's not a writing credit, but a story. Story. The the story by edit. <laughs> uh, up the Pixar movie. Oh my god! Well. <laughs> so yeah, that makes it even stranger so I, that this movie is so. Uh, oh yeah, and he uh, he wrote Spotlight, which is. Admittedly, not a great movie, but it's a good movie. Yeah. yeah. So, why then did he make this movie? Because <laughs> uh, this was not a Half Madison production, right? Mm, no, it's some larger studio and then high voltage pictures. I think high voltage productions. Mm. So it is. It's not. A, it's not Happy Madison. No. Because I was thinking if maybe he was trying. He was trying to make. A good movie, and then Adam Sandler came in and just ruined it. Yeah, uh, I'm... like wanting him to do stuff or change stuff in the script or something like that, because it really does feel like there's uh, at least two different movies, maybe even three different movies. Yeah, but it, it does, just it doesn't have enough Adam Sandlerisms to like feel like he went in and ruined it. And I don't, I don't think he has a producing no. role in the movie either. So I, I, mm. I don't know what I, I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> no. It's like yeah, it's like he wrote his little quirky drama about a cobbler, and then someone told him, "Hey, put a magical shoe machine in it, and make it sort of like a superhero movie." He's like what? Why? Uh, okay, I'll try. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's it's, it's yeah. strange, very strange. Um, but like you said, um, I didn't hate it. I, I I thought it was a little long. I th- I thought they spent a little too much time on haha. Now I'm this person. Now I'm this person. Um, I thought it could have been trimmed down or at least kept the same length if they just focus on different parts of the movie. Um, and I thought Adam Sandler was pretty good in it for the most yeah. part. He played this yeah a very very toned down character just like in all his good movies um so i i enjoyed that um you know he, he felt like he was a little bit on autopilot sometimes yeah i gotta say that the, the best actor in this movie that was method man he was great i, th- I thought he was a little over the top i don't know i i thought he was maybe yeah, that but was he's, the writing. he's trying to play adam sadler who is oh, yeah. like the personification oh, yeah. of over oh. top Oh yeah, that 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 that's true. That's true. Yeah, when 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 Method Man is playing Adam Sandler, Adam, playing yeah. him, yeah, those parts were good because he he felt like Adam Sandler. Mm. That's true. But yeah, when he was himself, he was like, oh yeah. But I think that was more the writing, because he came off as yeah. like he like a like a true villain. <laughs> yeah, but they had this thing that they they had to set up like really beating over the head. That he is a bad guy. Mm. There's no nothing redeeming of with him. Yeah, exactly. Just because, just because the script says that Adam Sandler's character uh, is going to kill him, and we are not supposed to feel bad about it. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's like, I mean, what what is that? He's uh, he's disrespecting someone's mother who just died. Oh yeah, that was. He's be- he's beating his girlfriend. He's uh racked. He's like beating up people in stores for no reason. Yeah. Or or getting protection money. It wasn't really clear. Yeah. He's he's taking money uh, to kill people. Uh, I mean, it it list just goes on and on about 
this guy is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really, they're really trying to convince you that this guy is bad. And like, yeah, we, <laughs> we get it, dude. <laughs> oh, um, but then, um, can we, yeah, sure. Let's discuss the twist in the end. <laughs> yeah. That Steve Buscemi, who has had the barbershop next to the shoe store or whatever for like, I don't know, 10, 20 years or whatever. Yeah. Um. That was Adam Sandler's uh, 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 father in disguise. Yeah, father who disappeared several years oh, ago. They never said how long ago, but no, but like I think it was when Adam Sandler's character was still a child, so many, 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 many years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's just been hiding out next door um, as as a barber because he also he and he. he they have this like short two minute conversation about it. That that should have been like a huge part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, like you ran away, you left me and my my mom for, for decades. And he's like, I'm sorry, but I did it for your own good. Like, okay, I love you, Dad. Like, wait, stop. <laughs> wait, stop, wait, stop, wait, stop. <laughs> There's more to this. <laughs> First of all, he knew about the magical shoe machine. Um, he used it to get into trouble just like Adam Sandler did. And then to protect his family, he, he chose to just abandon them without even telling them because it wasn't the time. But now it is? All right. Yeah. <laughs> the only reason it's the time now is because it's the end of the movie. Exactly. That's the only, the only reason. And, and Adam Sandler, he gets mad at him at first. I was like, oh, there's a, they're going to have a, like a, like a, a big scene where they, they, yeah. they, they work this out, basically. But it's literally two minutes and then they're fine, like, oh, I love you. And then he shows him the bat cave with all the shoes. And then they introduce that, the, that they've taken the first steps into a larger world. And then the movie's over. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? It's like this, it's, it's like this scene in, because um, I was thinking that, uh, it was the same feeling that you get in um, John Wick. Uh, yeah. When you first first get the glimpse of this world with the golden coins. Oh, yeah. When they, I, I, I don't remember exactly when. I think it's at the first time he gets to a hotel, and there's like this big thing, like everyone is an assassin here, and they have his own economy and all these things. That feeling, except the moment they mention it, the movie ends. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, there's this big thing. We have, we have, we're hundreds of people, and we're working to make the city better. And, and here's the end of the movie. Yeah. What? Like, what? It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't hinted at anywhere no. in the movie until the very, very end. I mean, and even, even, because uh, you didn't know that Steve Buscemi was his dad, right? No, but I figured it out quite early. I'd oh, say. okay, okay. Because I knew. Did about you know? It. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. I, I knew about the twist. Yeah. Um, How? Uh, they they mention it in one of uh, Red Letter Media's reviews. They, oh, they talk yeah, about the movie. And, yeah. And I, and I thought I'm not. Gonna, I'm never gonna watch it. I don't care. About spoilers. <laughs> Damn it! Five years later. Um, yeah. yeah. So I knew about that, and so I, I, I was trying to like. I don't think about it. Um. But Steve Buscemi's character, he he feels way too involved. Um yeah. To 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 just be like a, a side character. Um. I don't. I don't know if if it's. If it like you, you said you figured out pretty quickly. So was it too yeah, obvious well, that he was the uh, father figure, or I figured it out at the well, not super quickly. It was like instant. No, no. Uh, it was I. I know because I was having this. First of all, he felt like he was. Yeah, he was too involved. He just appeared, and he yeah. he never really. He never really did anything to just be a side character. He no. never never did at. Uh, enough to be like a uh, like a big character, so he was just there taking. Pl so that was kind of weird. They have to do something with this character. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, there was uh, when the body disappeared, because yeah, Adam oh, Sandler kills so this. Weird. Yeah, Adam Sandler kills this uh, bad guy that we established, yeah, and then he definitely. turns himself in to the police, which is uh, commendable, I'd say. Yeah, I think that's sure, that's sure. a. A, a, any other Adam Sandler character would not have done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he turns himself in uh, to the cops. The cops go there and they say, "There's no body." 
the body's disappeared. And his bag that he left there appears in his shop. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, uh, I, I I don't know exactly why, but I was like, yeah, that's Steve Buscemi did this. Oh, okay. It's, the, it's, the only, it's only characters who could do, do this. It's, it, there's no other explanation if it's not like magic MacGuffin stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it was one of those two. And then there was the scene with, I don't remember where Adam Sandler's going, but he, when he tries to hail a cab, Steve Buscemi's character comes out and stops him. Oh yeah, he's gonna, just like his dad did, he's gonna leave because he's gotten too involved. Oh, right. He just packs up his yeah. stuff and he's gonna leave. Yeah, and, and that in that scene, he talks in a way and the words he used, it was like, yeah, that's the father. That's, oh, okay. that's the father. <laughs> that's that's him. That's the father watching over him uh, and fixing his shit. Yep. It's mystery solved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, because the scene where where the body the body of Method Man is gone, there's no blood, the stolen mm. money and the stolen watches and all that is just gone and then up, magically appears in his shoe shop. Yeah, that really annoyed me because I didn't, even though I knew Steve Buscemi was <laughs> the dad... I didn't make that connection. I was just like, how are they going to fucking explain this? I was so mm. mad at that. And then when they do, it's just like, oh, oh, okay. So Steve Buscemi has been like following Adam Sandler around and like yeah. trying to fix his problems. It's just, wow, okay. Um, yeah. Because I, I had this this uh, this feeling, which I, I, I'm glad they didn't do, that it would be like magic magic stuff. That yeah, the shoes always goes back to the cobbler. Yeah, uh, something like that, and yeah. and uh, so I'm glad he didn't do that. No, I guess that would that would have been too much. Like oh no, we paint ourselves into a corner. Uh, magic. Yeah. But instead, of, oh no, we paint ourselves into a corner. Uh, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> um. But that was the like that was the only time I got really annoyed with the movie, like how they just ah we fixed that problem. <laughs> Other than that, I was. I was enjoying the movie uh, from time to time, but mostly I was uh, like it's just these long stretches of like I don't know. They're supposed to be funny scenes were just boring, so I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it, but mostly it was eh, whatever. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm not gonna watch it again, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop anyone from watching it really. Yeah, I, I got the same feeling. I yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be against watching it again, but it's not like a movie I'm gonna, like, buy on DVD. Oh, I mean, no. it's, it's, uh, yeah. If someone, wa if someone wants to watch it, sure. Uh, cause it's, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's such a, it's such a messy movie. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Mm. Um, so, and that, that's also part of, like, why I don't, I didn't really, really love it. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, I, I, for once in an Amazon movie, I didn't I didn't mind the the love interest uh, and how that story panned out. No. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's a little clumsy. Yeah, um, it's underdeveloped as usual. But yeah, yeah, as usual. Uh, it, it didn't and, but feel it, it, unearned. Yeah, it's not like in uh, Billy Madison or well, most Adam Sandler movies where they just flip a switch and now they're in love. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was at the end when they have spent some time with each other and he has helped her a lot. Yeah. And he, she asks him on a date. It's not even a kiss. Yes. There's nothing. Yeah, exactly. It's not that. It, oh, it's... now they're in love, and she's no. his girlfriend. No, it's just a no. Date. It's more like yeah. It's more like yeah. Well, I, I'm interested. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And I, I think that's, that's nice. Yeah, and for I, once. Yeah, and I, I, I think this character is kind of like, uh, it's 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 a likable character. I can see someone thinking, oh, he seems nice. Yeah, I can hang out with him because yeah. he's not obnoxious. Um, he's not he's not racist. He's not sexist. He's eh, he's just a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's yeah he's a little he's a little mopey, but I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, it made it made more much more sense than most other Adam Sandler movies. So, yeah, I, I didn't mind that at all. Yeah. Um. Yeah, most of the things I didn't mind in this movie. There wasn't any big ish glaring issues, no big racism or sexism no. or anything like that. No. I mean the I mean... most the most the most racist thing uh, they do is when he uh 
yeah, turns into a black person and robs the white person. Yeah, yeah. But he, that... he turns into Method Man and says, "Give me your shoes." Like, yeah. Oh my but, God, why? <laughs> but on the other hand, it's at that point the most uh, hostile or mean looking. He only have those yeah. shoes, I guess. No, that's true. That's uh, true. So, so I mean, it, it can be explained away, but it, it's kind of in bad taste. Uh, yeah. And then there was the um, uh, the trans transsexual uh, character that he used. Yeah. Because because uh, uh, he he has the shoes from someone who is transsexual, uh, and uh, and also is very uh, like uh, big, not not fat, big. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um... Tall, uh, and. Um, he uses that person as like his, I don't know, his. his... Yeah, he yeah, uses that. I don't that... know. He uses that 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 pair of shoes, that character for a lot of like scenes, but I, I'm yeah. not sure why he picked that specific character. Yeah, and then there's a few jokes regarding it, but I I wouldn't say it's like transphobic. It just no. also again again in bad taste, and that's that's the only only two things that uh, are a little. Yeah, I, Bad, but... but I'm wondering if we're if we're just used to the sexism and racism that we're like, yeah, oh, here comes he comes a transphobe jokes, but they aren't really there. It's just, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't think any character makes a remark about it. Man no, that calls him lady. Ugly. Or ugly calls him yeah, ugly. ugly. Yeah. And when he first You're, puts what, on you, the shoes, I... he says, I'm a woman, which I yeah. guess it tells that the trans trans person is passing which i guess is a good thing yeah but then know. he puts his hand then he puts his hand down his pants and says oh, oh no i'm right, not right 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 um, same scene, so. yeah, yeah. But, uh, and in all honesty i think most people would react like that if all of a sudden you turn into a woman but not really the way you would react so i guess and... uh, i guess uh, yeah again it's it's um questionable in a bad taste yeah. but it's not offensive no it's say. not yeah um compared to the other movies yeah to other movies yeah so uh, th those are the ones and and i was also going to mention like there are a couple of really violent scenes um um mm. involving method man um like him beating up people beating up women beating up uh, like defenseless people and but I, but i wouldn't but they're not like trying to make fun of it it's it's no. it has it has a purpose even though it's it feels a little excessive there is a story purpose to that violence so i i didn't yeah. i didn't mind it really yeah it's it more like excessive it's more like and it's not adam sandler violence no it's not like where it's, oh, where it's, <laughs> we're beating where it's up people so yeah, which and it's so over the top. It's more a realistic violence. Uh, yeah, which in a which way did make it a little more like ugh, but it made yeah. more sense that that it is realistic. Yeah. Uh, so I I didn't mind that at all. No, no, um, I didn't mind it. Um, so yeah, that that's yeah. that's this movie. That's the review for this movie. I didn't mind yeah, it. It's, uh, 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 yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So um, <laughs> the list. <laughs> yeah, let's let's start with the the uh, the Adam Sandler uh, spreadsheet. Uh, it's gonna be a really short one, yeah. Because uh, we have uh, one, Only one regular, but... yeah. Yeah, it's Steve Buscemi. Yeah, there's That's no the one else in this movie. Um, I'm trying to think, was there someone somewhere? But no, that's the only one. No. Um, and... there was a few. There was a few good actors in this movie. I mean, uh. Maybe not acting in this movie, but they are actors, famous good actors. Yeah. Which was interesting. Like Dustin well, yeah, Hoffman. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, yeah. Which I would like and, to see more of, but yeah. Yeah. Couldn't really do and that. Uh, what is it called? Uh, the neighbor boyfriend, uh, the British guy. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, Dan uh, Stevens. Dan, yeah, Dan Stevens, right. From, yeah. uh, from, is it Downton Abbey? Yeah, and Legion. No, right, no. right, right. I, I, I recognize him from uh, The Guest. The, the thriller movie he made. Oh, right. Um, and then we had, uh, wasn't the, cr uh, the crime boss or whatever, the the lady. I recognized her, but I, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't look her up. I don't, I don't actually know who she was. No, I, I recognized her too, but I don't know. And that then, was... but I, 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 um, 
the the trans uh, the the trans person was Joel Vasquez, who I recognize from uh, from Seinfeld as um, oh the, uh, yeah he he has a, a very small role in like two or three episodes, but he's <laughs> a very very recognizable character because he's like a like a like a flamboyant thug that beats up uh, Kramer and steals his uh, furniture. Uh, hmm. <laughs> so, um, so I recognize him from that, and he also has a small role in the A Team movie from ten years ago. So I was oh. like, "Hey, it's Yul Vasquez." But other than that, yeah, so, there's a, yeah. so well, maybe not great actors, but actors you recognize. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and no one, no one was like particularly bad or like felt miscast. Everyone did a, fi- a fine job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then yeah, there was um, I don't know. Have Have you seen True Detective? The first, uh, season? first season. Yeah, first okay. season. Well, okay. Uh, spoilers, I guess, for first season True Detective. One of the goons that are driving him to wherever they're supposed to go in the end, yeah. the uh, the bigger guy. That's the uh, the murderer from uh, the first season. All oh, right, the, right. That's the, where I know him. The monster, from. Or whatever they call him. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I know him from. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, he was there. <laughs> um, but that's that's about it, I think. Other than that, there are like, yeah. Huh. Small no-name actors in this she, quirky the, little the, indie movie. The crime boss uh, is uh, well, crime boss uh, Ellen Barkin. Ellen Barkin. Uh, she's been in a in a, in a quite a lot, uh, but Wait, nothing it, that super famous. But it, it, isn't she in? Uh... No, no, I'm thinking of Ellen Burstyn. Sorry. I was thinking, mm. isn't she in uh, The Exorcist? But no, that's Ellen Burstyn. Mm. <laughs> she she's in like a small uh, part in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, for oh, example. Okay. So she's yeah, she's small parts in. Oh a lot right, of isn't she? Um... No, maybe that's not her. I was thinking of the, um, the 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 housewife in um, Edward Scissorhands that opens up the barber shop for him. But I don't think that's her. I just I just thought of her, but that's not her. I think I don't think so, at least. No, I don't think so. Okay. I can't see it. Anyway. anyway. Um, but yeah, but that's that's it for uh, for characters and actors yeah. in the movie. So let's uh, move on to... Uh, yeah, let's move on to the rating. <laughs> I guess <laughs> yeah, unless there's anything more we have to say about it. I don't really have any more to say. No, uh, no. me neither. There, there's not much to say about this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those movies, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah um, but, but in a good way. Yeah, in well, a good way, though. Yeah, because... Yeah. It wasn't. I wasn't miserable watching this movie. No, this is a movie that uh, actually I think could be a good movie for the good movie for the script doctors. Oh sure, yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh oh yeah yeah. Please on live stream coming back sometime <laughs> this year. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah yeah, I'll, I'll write that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's go to the leaderboard. So, yes. the cobbler. Um, yeah. It has a 38 out of 100 on Metacritic. Um, but what would you give it, Christopher? I would give it a... I'm, I, I'm, I'm feeling shareable for this movie, so I would give it like a... 48. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Four, four, yeah, 48. 48 out of 100, yeah. Sli- uh, slightly below average, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I was... Because, yeah, I, I, I was... I was uh, ready for you to be like, oh, I don't know, 50, 60? I don't know. <laughs> Quite, but, but, yeah, you're closer to where I would be because I would, I would probably give it something similar. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking, like, uh, somewhere between, yeah, 38 is a little low, but I can see why it's got it got some really bad reviews, which it didn't deserve, but it also got I mean, some really on, good reviews, on, which it didn't deserve. On, I, on IMDb, it had 5.6. Yeah. No, 5.8. That's a little high too. Um, yeah. I would probably give it. I was gonna give it like a, like a forty, but uh, I, I'll, I'll, in the spirit of this episode, I'll be a little bit charitable. <laughs> I'll give it a, I'll give it a forty-three out of a hundred. I thought you were gonna say forty-one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it forty and a half. <laughs> no, but yeah, but forty-three. Like, it's not really, yeah. it's not really good, but it's not offensive. It's, eh, yeah. it's fine. Slightly yeah. below average. Um, if they'd actually like stuck to their guns and not turned it into a comic book movie, I would definitely have given it like a fifty or something. But it is, it is, 
I have I have to be a little biased and say it wasn't the movie I thought it was going to be, and that made mm. me disappointed. So uh, it's a little bit of that. But hey, man, um. it's it's my subjective opinion. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, but yep. that's it. Uh, the cover. Uh, yeah. So very, uh, very strange one. <laughs> So looking at the list, um, so the cobbler. Uh, so last the year before this, 2013, he made one movie, which was uh, last week, Grown Ups 2. Yeah, Grown Ups 2. Too. This week, uh, this year, 2014, he made three movies. Three. Movies. Yeah. So he made this one. Yeah. And then he did, which we will see next week, which is a Happy Madison production. Yay! <laughs> uh, blended. Okay, but Drew Barrymore which I it, know, so... yeah, which I know mostly nothing about. Right. Uh, more than it's Drew Barrymore, and it feels like one of the a vacation movie. Yeah, I don't know it, if it is. Yeah. Oh, no, it, yeah, it is. That's everything I know about it. She's in it because they meet mm. while their both their families are on vacation. So it's like, oh, oh it's okay. a vacation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then also the same year, 2014, he made Men, Women, and Children. Mm. One we've been talking about. Um, yeah, and another one where he like he's in a serious movie that also got yeah. terrible reviews. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's it. Uh, and after after that, we're getting into the Netflix era. Yeah, that's the Netflix era, which is. <sighs> <laughs> which I mean, I, I still think it could be so bad it's good. Uh, well, so bad it's funny at least. Yeah. Uh, even though you, you're, you're, yeah, I've, you're, I've said it many you're times. You're that. Yeah, I've seen parts of Ridiculous Six. That was enough for me. <laughs> no, because I haven't seen anything. Oh, um, okay. So, I don't think I've seen any movie. No, I haven't seen any movie from uh, this one and forward. No, I don't. Well, think I, I don't think I have either. Like, yeah, like I said, I've seen parts of. of no, you've seen Six, Pixels. But... All right, I saw Pixels. Yes, my only yeah. Adam Sandler movie in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be to be fair, I haven't seen any of these movies since like five weeks ago. Oh no, yeah, that's true. The like, Grown Ups was the last one I've I've seen before, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I hadn't seen any movies since like the early two thousands movies. Mm. Um. So yeah. Well, except for uh, Rain Over Me. And Pixels. Oh, yeah, 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 and Pixels. <laughs> Keep forgetting that movie. No, I'm thinking the movies we've watched up until now. Like, I haven't oh, seen okay. any of them before. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I, guess, yeah. I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah, this was, a, this, this was a short one. But you know what? That's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Relief in this yeah. terrible, terrible times. Yeah, it, it, it's good. It's good to have a, a little bit of a breather from time to time. Because yeah. it's been a really bad couple of weeks with uh, Grown Ups 2 and That's My Boy and Grown Ups 1. Oh, Jack and Jill. Yeah, oh, it was... yeah, Jack and Jill. So having this one being just not terrible was like, ah, oh, how nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, I agree. Yeah, but that's uh, yeah, that's it for, for, for this week. So thank you. Uh, and we had a, a few a couple of people watching live. So thank you for, for watching. Um, and to everyone watching it in the archives on YouTube. Be sure to, you can, you can see this on Tuesdays. Uh, live Swedish time, 8 p.m. on Twitch. And uh, yeah, give it a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you disliked it. And um, yeah, if you want to if you wanna follow along for next week, uh, you should watch... Um, um, I already forgot. What are we watching next week? Blended. Blended, right. You should watch Blended. And I know that's on Netflix. So, yeah, watch that if you want to. But until next week, have a good one. Bye. Bye, everyone.